Whenever I get a chance to cook beef short ribs, I jump at it. And today is kind of a very classic way to prepare them. We're gonna be braising them in red wine and we're gonna be serving them with some horseradish mashed potatoes. Now here are the beef short ribs. These are bone-in beef short ribs, USDA choice. I've got about five pounds, maybe a little bit more here. And the first thing we're gonna do is season these up with salt and pepper because we need to sear these before we get them back in the Dutch oven with all the red wine and the other goodness. Gonna get a nice dusting of salt and some nice cracked black pepper. Make sure we get salt and pepper on all the sides. Don't really need to worry about the bone side, the bottom. All right, let's head over to the stove and sear these up in my enameled cast iron Dutch oven. So I have two tablespoons of vegetable oil in my cast iron Dutch oven here. This is the enameled one, as I mentioned, and I'm over medium high heat. We're gonna sear our seasoned short ribs on all sides. I'm gonna do it in a couple batches so we don't overload the pan. That's what I'm looking for. Just some nice color on the sides and the top. Gonna remove these, sear up the rest, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, I removed all but about two tablespoons of that oil from the meat that's in there and leaving all the brown bits, that is flavor. And now we're gonna start adding some vegetables and some other flavors here. Gonna start with half of a red onion that's been chopped. one medium carrot that's been peeled and chopped, a tablespoon of minced garlic. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of tomato paste. Two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Cooking this for a minute. If I didn't mention it, I'm on medium heat now. I wanna let that color sort of develop from the tomato paste and the flour. Now we're gonna start adding our short ribs back in. And it's gonna get crowded. We're gonna be stacking them. Now we're gonna add one bottle of red wine. I'm using a Cabernet Sauvignon. Now we're gonna increase the heat till we get to a boil. Then we're gonna reduce it and get it down to a simmer and it's gonna go for like 25, 30 minutes until that red wine is reduced. We just wanna try and tuck everybody down in that wine as much as possible. All right, we're just starting to get some good bubbles here, sort of a boiling bubble. I'm gonna reduce my heat so this comes down to a simmer, and like I said, this is gonna go for 25 or 30 minutes. We're doing this uncovered because we want this to reduce. So I'll see you back here in about half an hour when that red wine is reduced. All right, we've been going for 30 minutes here simmering. You can see we've reduced nicely a little bit. And now we're gonna add some beef broth and some seasoning, some herbs. First thing, we're gonna get a bay leaf in there, and I've got all the other herbs mixed together. It is a teaspoon of rosemary, a teaspoon of thyme, a teaspoon of sage, and a teaspoon of oregano. I'm gonna add some beef broth now, and we're gonna bring it up to the level of almost to the top of the ribs. That was four cups of beef broth. I just wanna kinda of stir this a little bit, get those herbs moved around in here. 
We're gonna turn our heat up and bring this up to a simmer. Get some bubbles moving. Now, while we're waiting for that to come up to a simmer, you should be preheating your oven to 350 degrees. We'll put the lid on once it comes up to a simmer and then it's going in the oven for probably two and a half hours, maybe three hours. We'll check for tenderness after two and a half hours. And a reminder here, if you're using a cast iron Dutch oven like I am, don't grab it without good gloves on. That whole thing is hot. All right, we're starting to get a few little bubbles there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off get the lid on and it's gonna go into the oven. I'll see you back here in two and a half hours when we check our short ribs and if they're done at that time, they're gonna continue resting in that cast iron which will keep them nice and hot and we will then make our horseradish mashed potatoes. This is one of those occasions where smell-o-vision would be welcome. It smells amazing and I haven't even opened this yet. It has just been permeating the house, that lovely smell of beef and red wine. Oh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what's inside, so let's get the lid off. Oh, that looks amazing. I just want to do a tenderness check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty much probe tender. <laughs> Oh, wow. Now, if you can see that, the internal temperature of the beef right now is 210. So we are definitely done. They feel tender. It smells great. And what I want to do now, before I put the lid back on and set these aside, is I want to get about a cup or two of the liquid out of here because that's going to be used to make sort of a gravy drizzle over the top of this at the end. This will allow me to skim some of the fat off. Just so beautiful here. All right, we're gonna get the lid back on, set this aside back on top of the stove, just sitting there in this cast iron, staying warm. And we're gonna move on to making our horseradish mashed potatoes. So right here in this bowl, I have four russet potatoes, large ones that I peeled, broke down and boiled up. This is the base of our horseradish mashed potatoes. Now I just wanna initially break these down a little bit before we add anything else. Just a quick little thing there. To this, I'm gonna add six tablespoons of unsalted butter, and this is important when it's this hot because it'll be nice and melty. Get our tablespoons in there. We're also gonna add a teaspoon of kosher salt, a teaspoon of a coarsely ground black pepper, a tablespoon of dried chives, and half a cup of half and half. If we need to add more, we can. You could use regular whole milk for this. And we're gonna get to mashing. Let me get in here with my synthetic spatula real quick. I just wanna get down there at the bottom, make sure everything's getting up to the top to get mixed. And I don't like my mashed potatoes really creamy, like really, really whipped. So this is a really good consistency for me. Still has a little bit of structure in there, some little bits of potato. Now, before I add the horseradish here, I want to take a taste, see if we need to adjust for salt or pepper. Mm. Needs more salt. Good little pinch here. Back in there and mix up. And I like this consistency, so I don't need to add any more half and half. If you like it creamier, you could add more, totally up to you. Now, two tablespoons of prepared horseradish. Get in there and mix everybody up. And this is where you really wanna take some time and mix because you don't want that horseradish stuck in one spot of the potatoes. You might even wanna bring your masher back in at this point to really mix it up. All right, that's looking good to me. Let's plate up some of our horseradish mashed potatoes with some braised beef short ribs on top. All right, let's get a nice bed of our potatoes here. Let's get our short ribs on here. We can see that the bones have just decided to stay behind. 
and nothing wrong with that. Got some of our sauce here. This is just sauce that I took from those two cups, skimmed the fat off, and just sort of reduced a little bit in a pan. It's not really, really reduced. It's just a little bit, tasted it, added a little salt. It's not a gravy. It's just a little bit of a sauce to drizzle on. Finally, some scallions here. A little color, a little extra flavor. And there we go. Our red wine braised beef short ribs with horseradish mashed potatoes. I'm not waiting any longer. I'm diving in. I just want to get a little taste of these mashed potatoes first. I just love horseradish, especially when you use it in something like mashed potatoes. Mmm, nice little bite from that horseradish. Now let's get some of our beef short rib here. Here we go. As I mentioned, this is a pretty classic way to prepare beef short ribs when you're braising them, using red wine. And there's a reason it's a classic, because it's delicious. And one of the great things about this dish, these beef short ribs are, you could reheat them the next day and they're gonna taste, honestly, even better. There's just more flavor that develops. So if you wanna do it a day ahead, go ahead for me. I'm not waiting anymore. 